Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Mr. President, uh, allow me to start from the very beginning to refer to Amnesty International, uh, which has produced some reports recently and underlining that enforced disappearances, torture, and other ill ill treatments, including through the deliberate denial of medical care, are widespread and systematic practice in the Islamic Republic of Iran. Cruel and inhuman punishment, including flogging, amputations, and blinding, were imposed and or carried out. The use of death penalty increased and public executions resumed. Trials remained systematically unfair. Systemic impunity prevailed for past and ongoing crimes against humanity relating to prison massacres of 1988 and other crimes under international law. That's a statement from Amnesty International. These observations are confirmed by the Special Rapporteur on the Human Rights Situation in Iran and also confirmed by the Working Group on the enforced disappearances and by other human rights independent bodies. The Islamic Republic of Iran had adopted a pattern of conduct towards the Human Rights Council's Universal uh, Periodic Review, the UPR, and the Council's special procedures consisting of denial deflection and refusal to address the human rights violations and their various pretexts. Recently, Iran's parliament has passed a new hijab and chastity bill that lays out punishment for people, especially women, who violate the country's mandatory dress code the bill was passed just days after the first anniversary of the death of Mahsa Amini, a 22-year-old woman arrested by morality police for alleged non-compliance with the mandatory dress code and died in police custody in Tehran. Had that sparked nationwide protests that lasted for months and left hundreds killed. Iran has signed and ratified the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, ICCPR, on 24th of June 1975 under the Shah's regime. The Islamic Republic of Iran never notified or signified its withdrawal from it. Therefore, it is bound by all its provisions. The ICCPR, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, is a multilateral treaty that commits nations to respect civil and political rights of individuals, including the right to life, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, electoral rights, and the rights to due process and a fair trial. All these are the rules that the Islamic Republic of Iran has committed to. 
most rights protected under the ICCPR and the Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman or Degrading Treatment or Punishment are considered by many scholars as part of customary international law. And this part of customary international law has crystallized into what the lawyers among yourselves consider to be peremptory rules of use Kogans, meaning rules from which no derogation is permitted, even during war and civil disturbances or any other public emergencies. Violations of these rules might amount to crimes against humanity and war crimes if committed at war. The crimes committed and are still ongoing in Iran are argued to be some crimes of the past which the Council of Human Rights is not concerned with. Basically, when we talk about the 1988 massacre. In fact, numerous credible international NGOs have documented the enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killing of thousands of prisoners by Iranian authorities between late July and September 1988 for their political opinions and religious beliefs. Ayatollah Khomeini issued the fatwa in July 19, 1988, ordering the execution of imprisoned opponents, including those who had already been tried and were serving their prison terms. Reportedly, none had been sentenced to death. The text of the fatwa later published in the memories or memoirs of the Grand Ayatollah Hussein Ali Montezeri, who in 1988 was Khomeini's heir apparent. In a report to the United Nations General Assembly on the 14th of August 2017, the then Special Rapporteur on the Situation of Human Rights in Iran, the late Asma Jahangir, wrote, between July and August 1988, thousands of political prisoners, men, women, and teenagers, were reportedly executed pursuant to a fatwa issued by the Supreme Leader, Ayatollah Khomeini. A three-man commission was reportedly created with a view to determining who should be executed. Over the years, a high number of those reports have been issued about the 1988 massacre. If the number or persons who disappeared and were executed can be disputed. Overwhelming evidence shows that thousands of prisoners were summarily killed. Recently, these killings have been acknowledged by some of the highest, at the highest level of the state. That's a quote of the late Asma Jahangir. The United Nations Working Group on Enforced and Involuntary Disappearances in a report to the Human Rights Council on the 12th of August 22 expressed concern about the ongoing concealment of burial sites of those forcibly disappeared in the 1988 massacre. And I quote the working group in paragraph 59, it said, 
The working group reiterates the concerns expressed about the ongoing concealment of burial sites of those forcibly disappeared and allegedly executed between July and September 1988 across the country. The working group recalls that an enforced disappearance continues until the faith and whereabouts of the individual concerned is established and repeats its support for an international investigation on the matter. In addition to, the, to persistently refusing to provide information to the victims' families, Iranian authorities have engaged in a systematic crackdown on those seeking the truth and justice regarding the 1988 events. The Convention on the Non-Applicability of Statutory Limitations to War Crimes and Crimes Against Humanity entered into force on the 11th of November 1970. This provides that no statutory limitation shall apply to war crimes and crimes against humanity, irrespective of the date of their, commission, of their commission. It means that no matter how long uh, it, this uh, crimes passed, the perpetrators remain accountable. The Convention further provides that its provision shall apply to representatives of the state authority and private individuals who participate in or who directly incite others to the commission of any of those crimes or who conspire to commit them and to representatives of the state authority who tolerate their commission. Very clear, the convention uh, makes state representatives accountable in all circumstances about crimes against humanity, crimes of war. And it continues to say that the failure to hold suspect perpetrators of these crimes, like President Ibrahim Raisi, they're accountable. They're accountable, has failed a culture of impunity in Iran which can be seen by the brutal, deadly crackdown on current daily people's protests in Iran. The call for accountability regarding 1988 extrajudicial executions of political prisoners in Iran was recently supported by distinguished former international judges in a conference held in Paris 22nd of August 19, uh, 2023, making the 31st anniversary of the 1988 massacre, including the former president of the ICC and the special advisor on, on crimes against humanity to the prosecutor of the ICC, all those have recommended that there are avenues for holding those who committed such crimes accountable. To conclude, Mr. President, I would like to say that the first step to oppose impunity and secure accountability is for the UN Human Rights Council to renew the mandate of the international fact-finding mission to thoroughly and independently 
investigates the government's crackdown on the protests, which began in September 2022, and to expand its mandate to the 1988 massacre or 1988 mass murder of political prisoners. Thank you. Thank you very much.